Firstly, to all the listeners of uh, Pendle Radio, Awaz Radio, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. It's an honor and a pleasure to be live on the radio, and we'd like to thank you, fans and the team, for allowing us to be here. The Benefit Mankind teams, um, we operate in 12 countries, as many of you are aware, but we do a lot of local work because home charity begins at home, as we know, and there's a lot of need in our own communities. So since the lockdown started last year in March, we set up a helpline where we could help individuals and families that are struggling with food and essentials such as hygiene kits. And after setting up the helpline, we realized that this is going to be a huge task because the demand was so high. So many people have lost jobs, so many people are struggling with benefits not coming through. And at the same time, we realized a lot of individuals have become homeless. So we started our service and to help people. On a weekly basis, we were delivering around 200 food packs at the time, and it just continued. April, May, June, July. And then winter started coming and we thought we need to start providing winter kits. So in Blackburn we've got an organisation called IMO Charity and we work together with them. They've supported us on many projects and we had a discussion where we could try and help families during winter and IMO got in touch with the Lancashire Police Commissioner's Office. And um, together what we are now providing is something quite amazing. Um, if you're in the office here you can probably see or it's being recorded that a winter kit essential pack which is keeping those people on our streets warm and it's important at the moment you're listening to this you're probably in a house or you're in a car you're in some form of warmth but those on the streets unfortunately don't have such facilities and for us to try and make things easier for them and at the same time trying to guide them in the right direction is very very important so this is what we are providing at the moment and um, the Lancashire PCC, the Police Commissioner's Office and Clive Grunshaw, uh, you've been quite instrumental in this project so we'd like to firstly thank you for being supportive towards this project and um, how does it make you feel Clive that uh, we're doing this together not just in Nelson, Pendle, Burnley areas but Blackburn, Blackpool, Preston, surrounding areas of Lancashire we're managing to deliver every single week. <clears throat> Firstly, just good evening to, to everybody. It is wonderful to, to be here. Um, in terms of, of how I feel, I mean, the, the simple answer is humbled. Um, it, it's really seeing the, the spirit that we um, can tap into within the communities, people supporting each other, um, and to 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 be a part of that, to see people pulling together and providing support to those most in need. Um, and particularly, I think, you know, during the, the pandemic over the last 12 months, we've really seen that come to the fore. The number of people that have been volunteering, supporting the, the local communities, you know, with the, the testing and with the vaccine now, you know, just helping each other out. I think it's, you know, we always in Lancashire, we've always been proud of, of the community spirit um, that, that we, we claim to have. And I think really over a number of years, I think some of that has been broken down. I think some of the, the close-knit communities have been fractured. But I think certainly over the last 12 months, we've seen that being resurrected. We've seen some of that coming out more. Now, in, from my perspective, I mean, as Police and Crime Commissioner, you know, it's been difficult over the last 10 years with the, the cuts to policing. We've got more funding coming back in now. You know, but policing has been overstretched. We've had the impact of the cuts across the, the whole of the public sector. Social care has been stripped back. Youth services have been uh, cut back. You know, so we've had, um, you know, mental health services in Lancashire have been in crisis. And the layered on top of that has been the situation around COVID. So we've had really an explosion of the, the non-crime demand, the social need, you know, and people um, that, uh, you know, people that have got drink, drugs, mental health issues, the home lives uh, might have, um, you know, disintegrated. There's 
people that for, for no real kind of uh, fault of their own have found themselves in really dire circumstances and I'm certain we'll find more of that over the, the coming months and years as the, the post-Covid when we see the real repercussions of what's been going on. So policing has been overstretched, they've not been able to, to do everything, you know, and clearly that's not their job. You know, so it's really having an understanding of who can fill that void, who can provide the support for the communities and benefit mankind, an organisation, not just them, we, we work with um, street pastors, street angels, a number of volunteer organisations that actually go out on the streets, meet people who are in, let's face it, they're in dire circumstances, many people. You know, this is winter time that we've been through. Can you imagine, you know, being homeless, being out on the streets in the circumstances of, of the, the freezing weather and the, the wet and windy kind of conditions that we've seen? You know, it's difficult for, for me, but I've been out a number of times and, you know, seen some of the circumstances that people live and it does pull on the, the heartstrings. And so having organisations like Benefit Mankind, who absolutely go above and beyond, going out there all across the county, providing support to, to people in those circumstances, makes a massive difference. It makes a huge difference to those individuals because it's not just that immediate support, it's making contact, it's actually knowing what is happening out there in the communities. Because the more we know, the more we can target, the right support in the right places and we can build up that support you know but it is about that it's about it's about meeting people providing the support immediately but then actually trying to turn their lives around giving them building up their their life skills building up their hopes and aspirations finding housing accommodation but you've got to meet them first and that you know, this is a long answer to a short question. The question was, how do I feel? I feel humbled. I feel actually enthused. You know, it's exciting sometimes to see the positive response you get from people. And so just to be a part of this, because I only play a very small part. You know, I get the funding and it's the allocation. You know, other people in many ways do all the hard work and go out, you know, in unsocial hours in the evening, um, you know, in some ways, I, I do the easy parts of it. Um, but just to to do that and witness some of the great work that's going on, you know, I just think it, I want to build on it. I want to really kind of capture that and, and make sure that, that they, this isn't just because of COVID, this isn't just because of the pandemic, that the community spirit and support and the volunteer that is happening now that we capture that and we take that forward and we build on that in the future. That is my hope and the aspiration for, for Lancashire. This is just small steps, but small steps in the right direction. So, um, the community has been diverse. Initially, when we launched uh, the campaign, we thought we'd be helping people who are out of work, but we come into statistics we've realized that a lot of people that are working are also struggling just to, just about paying their bills and they've got families they've got kids and they struggle for essentials such as food i remember when i used to work for the department of work and pensions as a crisis loan advisor we used to help with food gas and electric and i didn't know going forward in life that we'd be doing the same thing as a charity organization as well so a lot that was picked up before we're delivering at the same time. The community has been diverse. It's not just been Muslims, it's been Christians, we've had Jewish, we've oh, had yeah. the Hindus. We've had people calling us from all over, different backgrounds. And it's important we help every single person, regardless of race, religion, color, background. And this is what charity work is all about. It's about being a human first and looking at everything else after. Now, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a really good question. Um, in terms of the the situation with the pandemic is skewed all of the, the crime statistics because the, the world has changed, you know, there hasn't been as many people out on the, the streets. Traditional crime has fallen. But the, 
the two types of crime that are notable by the increase has been um, domestic abuse. Uh, there's been a significant increase in, in domestic abuse with the lockdown, you know, and I think um, even with the increase that we've seen, um, the the belief is that probably the, the tip of the iceberg, you know. We, we do know that um, the, the stress, the strains, um, that people have been under financial pressures, uh, the, just the lockdown situation, people drinking alcohol more from home. You know, we know that um, it's more of an acute situation for people. And so the fact that we're already seeing a significant increase in domestic abuse is a real worrying concern for what is actually going to come forward after post, uh, post-COVID when we find out what's really been, been going on. The other, the other um, that's been area of crime, if you like, that's been um, exploding has been anti antisocial behaviour. But a lot of that has been people in breach of the the COVID guidelines, and so with the the fixed penalty notices and the increase in reporting of um, of those, that has meant the antisocial behaviour itself has increased. All the types of crime have fallen, but it might be that they've just been masked by the, the lockdown. Fraud as well has been, you, know, you can imagine, more people now with their working from home with their laptops, iPads. The whole world now is, um, is using uh, this kind of technology, but of course, so are criminals. And everybody who's got an iPad, iPhone, uh, laptop or whatever it might be in their house, you can lock all the doors you want, but the criminals are there with you, you know, trying to defraud you and take your money off, off you and so that that is a real concern and that's been on the increase as well. In terms of of knowing what is going on and being able to plan ahead for that it's quite difficult because I don't think anyone knows what the world's going to be like in six months, twelve months time and, and all we can do in, in many ways is get more police officers onto the streets, rebuild neighbourhood policing, reconnect with the communities, you know, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to do it in a number of ways. We're trying to do it in a number of ways. One of those is Facebook. Every policing team in all the villages have all got their own Facebook pages that are followed by those communities. Uh, so we're giving the police the technology and training to communicate with more people. Lancashire Talking is an interactive tool where people can sign up for messages by the police as, and they can report things and get messages via text or email, even down to the street in terms of what has been happening or any concerns that have been going on. We've got 70,000 people that have signed up to that already, more than any other police force in the country and that is going up by thousands every week and that is going to really be a huge benefit in the future because we can target in terms of resources from police officers but also working with people like um, Benefit Mankind you know we'll have we will know where some of the challenges are where some of the deprivation is where some of the homeless people are you know the issues that are happening even down to a street by street basis can be reported in that information that can then be captured and then we can work with the charities and other support teams to go out and provide very localized bespoke support for those communities and so i think we're working in a far more intelligent way building back up the connection with the communities and like I said, if you have an opportunity to go onto the police website and sign up for Lancashire Talking, that's going to be, in the future, a great way of having that interaction with the police. But also, we're going to lay it on top of that, our Lancashire, which is a social action network to empower local groups and local communities to provide the support for like, you know, a bit in a way like the charities and what Benefit Mankind do. It's all about empowering communities. And we have our Community Action Fund, the CAF, which comes from the proceeds of crime, money taken from criminals, that we are investing through 
our Lancashire back into those communities. So there's grants to support ideas so people within the community will know the problems that they face but they also know the solutions. So from our perspective it's giving them the tools, not just the police but the community to actually bring forward the solutions themselves and deal with those issues. Yeah. You see, when a person's hungry and they're starving, they will do absolutely anything to get food, whether that means stealing, robbery, hurting someone. Hunger is something that we're very fortunate, we've not had to go through, but those, when we speak to them, unfortunately, they have no other option. This is why when we're going out with these winter kits, not only are we providing the winter warmth, we're providing the hot meals. So at least by providing these meals, we know that they'll abstain and refrain from doing such acts, which would then get them into trouble. And if we help these people on the streets, hopefully it makes life easier for the police as well. Because you know that robberies and actions of such can make life so much difficult for everyone else involved. Organisations like yourself coming to this? Yeah, yes, for, for for sure. I mean, the 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 first part of the question, you know, about food poverty. I mean, in in simple terms, there is a correlation between deprivation and crime. There's a correlation between deprivation and mental health issues, between deprivation and teenage pregnancy, between deprivation uh, and um, aspirational outcomes in life. Deprivation is a causal factor for, for many things. Now, in terms of um, food poverty, that, that is probably uh, an extreme um, symptom of, of an underlying cause. And it's the underlying cause that, um, that we really need to get to. Now, I've spoken to many people on these streets. I've also spoken to, to many people uh, that, are, that are in prison. Um, and trying to get an understanding of their life story. You know, what leads to people living in, in dire circumstances? You know, I've spoken to people who've been in prison for, for 30 years and, and just to try and get an understanding of why they've, you know, gone down that route. And for nearly everybody I speak to, they will talk about some kind of trigger, some trauma that has happened to them previously in their life. Quite often when uh, when they was young, uh, and it could be a bereavement of a parent, it could be uh, being brought up in a dysfunctional family, it could be the victim of abuse, whether it's domestic abuse, sexual abuse. There's all kinds of different kinds of trauma that people might have experienced. And particularly if they was young at the time, they carry that, that pain, and sometimes don't really understand themselves why that has triggered the, the reaction that it has. And people then quite often will bury the pain with the alcohol, with the drugs, and it leads, like I said, to mental health issues. These are symptoms of an underlying cause. And quite often with people on the streets, or even like I said, people who are in the prison system, is you've got to peel back the onion, you've got to peel back to what created the trauma and the triggers in the first place. And only then, once you, you deal with that, or at least learn how to, to manage that and understand it, that you can then try and put people back on to the right path. So in, in simple terms, it's dealing with the, the here and now, the today, it's helping them with their circumstances and trying to give them the, the right support at the right time. But actually it's far greater than that. Because if you want to make a real difference to, to that person's life, then it's little steps going forward. It's about t taking them out of those that situation, putting them in a better one. And quite often we always say for, for people coming out of prison, you put people in the same situation you're going to get the same results you've got to give them a different way forward and you don't want people ending up uh, going back to a life of crime taking drugs ending up on the street being traumatized with mental health issues you've got to give them a different path forward and you can only do that by building up their confidence building up their life skills 
and, and actually dealing with the underlying causal issues. So that's what we're going to focus on in Lancashire, a trauma-informed approach, understanding the trauma, the triggers that caused the problems in the first place, getting to people as young as possible. And, <clears throat> and you know, I've mentioned uh, domestic abuse, because domestic yeah. abuse is one, of, is, is one of the biggest issues yeah. that we face. And <clears throat> I'll quickly just, um, I'll just mention it quickly. We know that in households where domestic abuse takes place, that 90% of the children in those households either witness that abuse or they will be abused themselves. And that then traumatizes them and quite often they become abusers themselves or they, they will end up with the, the same kinds of problems that I've alluded to, people in a criminal justice system or people ending up traumatised and living on the streets. It's yeah. a good suggestion. Yeah. It is something we discussed a good few months ago, I think it was September, October time, we realised that majority of those on the streets don't have access to phones, which is an issue. Um, but what we would and have been doing is signposting the individuals for further assistance. And um, there's so many organisations, especially around Blackburn and Blackpool and Preston, there's hubs that are set up where these individuals can go for support. So we are signposting them. And I think out of the past three weeks, we've already had a few who are on the streets who are now uh, receiving shelter. So like the Salvation Army in Blackburn, we've got the past progress in Blackpool. They're already sort of supporting these people further. Once they get that shelter, it's easier for them to access the phone and other services and uh, I think this is one way forward. One of the key factors in this kind of work is you've got to be on the ground when it matters and you've got to be able to engage with the people. What we at Benefit Mankind do and that the way our volunteers are trained up is not just to give that food parcel or win ticket but to spend time with individuals, talk to them. Like you just mentioned there Faz, Many of these individuals have nobody to talk to. The family have deserted them. Yeah. They're alone. They've got no one to speak to. And when you start talking to them 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you realize that this person has gone through quite a lot. And you know what? If for us, we're just giving our time, but to them, giving them five, 10 minutes to them is so precious because they've not had that from anyone at all. So it's important we discuss, we talk to them, give them that support and love and compassion. And that's very, very important. And the biggest thing that we learn, and this is a message to all the listeners of the radio, is to appreciate what we've had. Yeah. There's many individuals who we talked to who had good jobs, who had wives, who had children. Unfortunately, an issue arose. The wife either kicked the husband out, homeless on the streets, lost the job. And all of a sudden, from having a good position in life, they're homeless and on the streets. So things can change at any time. But if we appreciate what we have, hopefully we can support others, we can make a bigger difference. And um, I always say to all our supporters and donors, appreciate what you have before it becomes what you had. Sure, I mean, uh, the, the answer is not usually no, it's just really there to, to, to listen to them, to try and get an understanding of, of, of their circumstances. And in terms of, of what you can find, is that they have a range of backgrounds and you know and absolutely um, it, it's the circumstances that they are in could could happen to anybody um, you know I've met people who have been wealthy businessmen uh, who have been you know with with degrees uh, who have had good jobs you know and the their lives have kind of fallen apart for you know for many different reasons you know, like I said, sometimes it just takes one thing, you know, and, and it can be a trigger. You know, it can be something that was there previously or something that's happened in their life. And all of a sudden it spirals out of control and people end up in the most dire, dire of circumstances. And so it is really just there to provide the support. Um, but I always try and get an understanding of people's life stories you know, background, just give me information about, you know, your life, where you've been, what you've done, you know, because all of that gives us more information and understanding of, of 
how this has been created and if you, the, the more of that you know then the more you can actually prevent other people going down the, the same path. You know we've got a real focus on prevention you know trying to to prevent people get ending up in the criminal justice system you know talking to young people as early as possible giving them the right support you know I've mentioned about building up um, people's hope and aspirations you know there's lots of opportunities in the world for people but sometimes people don't understand that people you know it, it's um, it, it's always fascinating sometimes you know when I was when I was young when I left school it was quite easy you know in Lancashire we had very traditional industries you know in East Lancashire the textile industries the cotton mills and you know I, I come from Fleetwood and we had the fishing industry and when I left school when I was 16 um, on the day I left school they just told me I was working at Robertson's which was a winch builder for trawlers um, which is the winch pulls the the fishing nets into the the boat but that was going back to you know the the early 1980s when the fishing industry was just um, on its knees and there was only a few years before you know it all kind of collapsed but we had you know it was in some ways it's like a conveyor belt there was a way forward people knew what they was going to do in life you left school and you started work you had traditional industries and there was a kind of you know you had family that lived close together you family supported each other but society has changed you know young people now have to move further away um, we've, we've got a breakdown between older people and younger people you know a breakdown from the generations that's not as close-knit as they used to be you know we've got more antisocial behavior with young people and, and less tolerance um, of young people by older people because they see them less and you have all those social issues you know because society is becoming more fractured and so it's trying to have an understanding of that and building that back up so there are opportunities for people but those opportunities have to be the right opportunities you know and it's you know we try and get to young people as early as possible you know like I said prevention is always the best way not criminalizing young people um, straight away because quite often people young people are groomed into um, some the, the life of crime and the the criminal exploitation um, quite often that we're seeing with young people so it, it's it's understanding that and making sure that we put people on the the right path and that way you know if you get an understanding of people's circumstances listen to their stories listen to what's happened to them then you can try and help them but you can help other people by putting the right support you know at the right time in the right place there when it matters and um, sacrificing their weekends and evenings to help the needy in our communities because we work together we see that firsthand so we appreciate that and to all the listeners out there the month of Ramadan is coming the month of patience the month of giving and don't just give financially go out there in your communities and help those that are struggling the month of Ramadan is coming let's do as much as we can and remember the best of mankind are those who benefit mankind and together we can all make a bigger difference and Clive any final words yeah just thank you for the the opportunity and for the listeners I wish you all well through the the month of Ramadan you know like I said you know we've created uh, some great community spirit um, over the last 12 months you know we want to keep that going forward so I wish you all well take care look after yourselves and you know I'll, I would love to to come back and um, maybe in a few weeks or a few months time you know we can do this again whatever just send me the invite I'd love to be here yeah, so much.